Hello everyone, my name is Venerable Radha. Um, I thought today I'll do a session um, on Metta Meditation as I learned it from Ajahn Brahm. Like many of you, um, I have heard of all the different types of meditation, Vipassana meditation, Samatha meditation, uh, Anapanasati as in mindfulness on the breath, the four foundations of uh, mindfulness, the uh, Satipatthana Sutta. And then there's metta meditation and so several different kinds. And when you try to attend classes to learn these uh, types of meditation, quite often you come away thinking, huh, they all focus on different things, there must be different types of meditation. Until you then attend a retreat conducted by Ajahn Brahm. And somewhere in there, as always, somebody asked the question, can we do a session of metta meditation or can we do a session of samatha meditation? And in the Q&A, Ajahn will take the time to explain. He says, when you can't do metta meditation, when you're not in the mindset of doing metta meditation, go and do anapanasati. If you can't do anapanasati, go and do satipatthana. If you can't do satipatthana, go and do vipassana. And in the end, what you soon understand is that in Ajahn Brahm's books, they are almost all the same. Um, they use the same methods to try to, the, to get to the same end point. Um, so what have I learned? Um, quite often, especially if you are a beginner or if you've had a bad day, it's quite hard to sit down and meditate and you think, oh, which one should I do? Which one should I do? And after a few years with Ajahn, the message becomes a bit clearer. There is one end goal. The end goal is peace and stillness. Peace as in, and stillness as in the mind being so contented, it just wants to stay in one place. It doesn't want to pick up anything. It doesn't want to pick up a thought. It's not interested in any thoughts not interested in any desires or um, news, not interested in quarrels. And that gives you a sense of this inner peace. If the mind doesn't want to pick up anything, even when it's brightly awake, what does it feel like? And Ajahn Brahm gives a hint. It is soaked, imbued with contentment. You are so happy to be there. You don't want to be anywhere else. You don't want to be doing anything else. It's just sitting quietly. And then, the way he describes meditation, he uses all the available teachings that the Buddha taught. Uh, samatha vipassana, anapanasati, mindfulness of the body, mindfulness of the breath, mindfulness on feelings, mindfulness on consciousness. What we want to do in meditation is to use all these um, anchors for the attention allow the mind to catch on to something that is neutral or pleasant and let that object lead the mind towards more and more peaceful states. And 
the secret of it is this new word that Ajahn coined, you have heard, you've all heard it, kindfulness. If you have kindness towards the object that you latch on to, and you're mindful of it, you're putting your attention on it with kindness, eventually the mind by itself will settle down. And then that would lead us to the end goal of peace and contentment. And even when you use metta as the vehicle, the end goal is the same and the method is the same. The work that you do is the same. Kindfulness. Quite often, many of us would tell ourselves, oh, I can't meditate, I've got too many thoughts. Or there are days when you come back from work or you wake up on the wrong side of bed and you say, oh, I don't feel very good today. My body's aching, my head's, my head's aching and my energy is low, my stomach's growling. And then you'd say, I can't meditate. And I've come to realize that when we say things like that, uh, it's often because we equate meditation to the end result, which is the stillness and peace. And Ajahn points out that that's not the case. Meditation is the work of applying the mind in a kindly matter, a manner. The end result, the peace and the happiness, is a byproduct. That comes quite often as a result of the work you do. And then the next thought would come up and say, oh, I feel lousy, I don't really want to do the work. Um, and this takes a bit of wisdom and experience because what you'd realize if, if you've done this a few times is that the work of meditating actually gets you into a better place. Not so much because you want to, but that's just what happens when you put your mind in a kindly state. Hmm. Now, the other hint that I might mention today is um, this characteristic of our mind the way uh, the Buddha describes it, it's one very elusive and slippery animal. It moves very quickly, quite often without a trace. Um, it gets to places and back, and we don't, we don't even realize it quite often. There's no shadow, there's no footprint. For example, if I ask, all right, if you, can you close your, close your eyes and see the moon? And quite easily, most of us can close our eyes, see a full moon. And if I say, can you see a crescent moon? And you can close your eyes and see a crescent moon. Did you know that it takes about two and a half seconds for light to get from Earth to the moon and back? And our minds can do it faster than two and a half seconds. Faster than the speed of light. If I say, all right, wherever you are in the world, can you imagine, can you place yourself at the foot of the Eiffel Tower? And right there, Eiffel Tower is right beside you. Can you be standing on the Sydney Bridge and see the Opera House? Quite easily done. And that's how... That's how fast the mind can move around 
faster than the speed of light. Um, so how do you bring the mind to come and rest peacefully, contentedly with us in a place close to us without running away? One observation is that the mind, it's, it's a pleasure seeker. It looks for pleasure all by itself. If it finds discomfort, it will instantly run. Can you imagine if you had a fight with a friend or a person? You very much not want to be in the same room with that person. If you are stuck in that same room with that person, physically, as in if the doors were locked, if you couldn't get out, if it was, say, in a plane or something, what would you do? If the body can't run, the mind would run. You would pull out your phone, jump onto social media, watch a movie, and be somewhere else. Because it's uncomfortable here. So, what Ajahn teaches then is that it's almost like trying to get a cat to come crawl onto your lap and sit down. You can't catch the cat by the collar and force it down onto your lap and say, sit! The cat won't sit very long. And if, you, if it did sit, you'd probably have a lot of scratches. On the other hand, the idea of kindfulness, the idea of metta, can attract the cat to naturally want to come and sit with you. And that's the same with our minds. The cat's mind and our mind has this same quality. It's a pleasure seeker. So, what happens when your body doesn't feel right? Your head's not in the right place. How do you get the mind to come sit? Here, we have to do a bit of work, unfortunately. Imagine now you've had that fight with somebody you love dearly, a close friend, your best friend for life, your BFF. And you can't quite let the anger simmer. You have to solve it somehow. So you have to make amends, mend fences, build bridges. And you can't quite do that by saying, okay, now own up, what did you do wrong? It's all your fault. Your relationship probably won't patch very well that way. But if you approach the other person with kindness, kind attention, then there's a far better chance that the animosity will be resolved and the anger subdued. And quite likely too, the relationship will become stronger. And that's the work that we need to do if we wanted to mend fences. And that also is the work of meditation. Whatever it is that you're experiencing, whether it's troubling thoughts, whether it's a headache, whether it's a back pain like what I have now, whether it's depression or just the ickiness of the present moment, the work is the same, kindfulness. And 
to help guide us what to do, Ajahn came up with this. Three questions. The Emperor's three questions. Who's the most important person? And in this case, when you're going to meditate, you can look around in your head, in your mind space, in your body, and see who's the one that needs the attention most. Who's the elephant in the room? And you have to be quite um, honest and wise about this to pick the right elephant. To know what the real issue is. Don't get drawn into the arguments, but focus on healing the relationship. So, for example, if you have a bad headache, the thought is not so much, get out of here! I don't want a headache. Why, the, why, why, why does the headache have to come at this time when I'm supposed to be meditating? Your relationship with the headache will worsen. And when that happens, the mind runs. The mind will look for its own social media and do something else instead of sitting around. So instead, what we want to do is to Man fences with that headache. Dear headache, come sit. Sit with me. You look like you can use some attention. You can use some friendship. And slowly in that way, the headache and your attention, a bit uncomfortable, awkward at first, but your attention, your, as you're doing this piece of kind work, your attention has the opportunity to hang around and watch that elephant, watch that headache, and build trust, build relationship with that headache. And if you sit long enough with that piece of headache, the tension will slowly reduce. And of course, I repeat that the tension has to be kind attention has to be full of metta. It doesn't matter what the that piece of suffering is, whatever the discomfort is. Um, the Buddha talks about the two darts or the two arrows. On the one hand, there is the underlying cause, the quarrel that went past, an injury that has happened, the lack of sleep, whatever the cause of that pain. And then there's this second arrow, the second dart, the mental dart. Or another way to, to look at it is the relationship with the underlying cause. The, I don't want you here, I hate you. The, it's all your fault. That second dart causes the mental anguish. And that's the second dart that we want to heal through kindfulness, through metta meditation. The first dart, of course, if you can do anything else about it, you'll see a doctor, get some sleep, whatever, rest, exercise, stretch, if it's a bodily pain, or if it's something more serious, 
see doctors and specialists. That we do at another time. In parallel to doing un addressing the underlying cause, we do meditation imbued with metta, imbued with kindness, so that the second dart is not there. We don't poke ourselves with the second dart and feel additional pain. So, okay. Um, so much for the talking. Um, I invite you to now um, get ready to meditate. Sit relaxed. As I was saying, it's all about developing a healthy, friendly relationship with your body, with your mind. So sit in a way that you can be kind to your body. Um, this is not a, what do you call it, um, physical training or, men, or, or some kind of a military training. So there's no need to be totally rigid. There's no uh, parade inspections. <laughs> there are no um, yoga instructors to tell you uh, to point your fingers here or to straighten your toes there. Just relax and find a comfortable posture. And check within your body, within your mind, if there are discomforts. For some of you, it might be one very obvious one, like a back pain that I have. Give it some stretching if you think that will help. Add another cushion if that helps. If it's more like a headache, watch what you're doing with your muscles around the head, muscles around your cheeks muscles in your jaw, relax them, try not to add any more tension to the situation, the pain won't go away immediately, we don't expect it to. And it's not so much that we're trying to get rid of the pain, but we want to reconcile our relationship with our mind, with our brain. We're not trying to shame the brain or humiliate the brain or even make the brain feel guilty for putting us through this pain. Is not. The brain is doing its best. We recognize that. And our brain, our backs, our hips, our knees are all part of our closest circle of friends. And to all these parts, we are kindful. We pay attention to them. A bit awkward, a bit uncomfortable in the beginning because we have lost touch for a while.
reconnect with all these parts and hear their stories. and wish them well. Just like sometimes you meet friends who are in trouble. The stories are hard to hear. Sometimes you may even find it slightly disgusting. But there are friends. We don't abandon our friends. We stay with them. We offer us support. We lend our strength we sit with them Initially, it may feel like work to try and get ourselves to pay attention to something uncomfortable. But as your relationship improves, as your sense of caring grows, we become more interested. And we find it more in more easily um, to stay. Once in a while, just remind yourself, even this pain is my friend. 
I care for this friend. If the pain is obvious to you and you can relate to it in a kindful way, good. If the feelings are a bit more vague and you can't place it, the breath is normally a good proxy. The breath seems to carry a lot of our emotional burdens. If you can feel your breath, chances are You can read the emotions that are burdening upon you. And whatever it is you're feeling, is a friend, not to be despised or upset about. But someone to be cared for with kindness. with metta.
remember you don't have to fix anything. The work that we have to do is just kind, mindful attention. Sincerely caring for this friend. If you like, if your mind is a bit restless, you might repeat to yourself, may this friend be well. And here the friend refers to the pain or the discomfort. May this friend be well. May this part of the body be well. May this part of the body relax and rest.
hopefully. Your heart is in a better place. Even though the underlying cause of the pain or the discomfort may still be there, but at least our relationship with it has improved. The tension is not so bad now. The aversion, the discomfort, the mental, emotional discomfort is much less. The present moment doesn't feel like so bad a place after all. Much easier for the mind to stay. If our mind were like a cat, we'll probably curl up on our lap now. Why? We have made peace through kindful attention. We have done a bit of good work. Quite often, when somebody tells Ajahn, I can't meditate, and Ajahn will look quite bewildered and incredulous, and he'll say, what do you mean you can't meditate? And 
And after training for a few years with Ajahn, I've now come to understand his response. We are all capable of a bit of kindness when we want to. We just have to bring that kindness towards whatever that's in our mind, whatever that's troubling us. If there's a big elephant in the room, the elephant gets all the attention. If there are a few small elephants in the room, they all get a bit of the attention. If there's, if we are so lucky to be not troubled, the attention will naturally sit on our lap, just like a cat. Together with our breath, What Ajahn will also point out during his nine-day retreats he explains these things um, not in a flippant manner but in a scholarly manner how the stages of Anapanasati you First, follow your breath, follow your emotions, follow your feelings, follow your thoughts, follow your consciousness, just like what's described in the Anapanasati as well. And just in the last half an hour, We have covered a lot of that. <laughs> Whatever's the most obvious discomfort or feeling or thought, that's the one we would address first. And as you become more peaceful, you can stay with the breath for a long, long time.
they say that the best way to honor a teacher is to practice his teachings. But for many of us, eventually, when you discover the joys and the pleasures of this peace and contentment, you'll be doing it anyway, every day. If you are just starting your meditation practice, I invite you to learn and discover the joys on this occasion of Ajahn's 70th birthday. We do have a very good meditation teacher in our midst, very rare in the world. It is for this reason that I've come to Australia. And it's an opportunity not to be missed. I will take my leave. Thank you.